questions. Go ahead, Coach. Uh, okay. Well, we're um, you know headed into our final uh, you know phase of the off-season program. Uh, we'll finish up. Um, you know, with rookies, uh, like they'll continue after after this week. But as far as formal team activities, uh, this is the this is the final week here, and um, so always good to be able to you know pull things together here at the end and and um, try to prepare the team uh, and the coaching staff for training camp and um, you know the start of the of the work that's ahead in uh, July and August uh, prior to the start of the season. So. Um, had a little weather here. We're um, working through some uh, travel arrangements, so we'll uh, see. You know what the full uh, level of participation is here uh, today and for this week. Um, but that's really, um, you know, we'll. I'm sure we'll have a, you know, we'll have a pretty full roster. Um, and so it's you know good to good to see a couple new faces here. Um, we've made progress uh, throughout each of these OTA practices, and um, so we'll continue to build in some uh, things that you know get us a little bit closer to uh, you know real football that you know involve other new situations and so forth. So um, progressing into teaching and. Uh, Feel like the players are, you know, getting more comfortable and acclimated with what we're doing. Uh, but as I said, we have a long way to go. We're working a lot of different people and working people at different positions, so they can um, get a background in in uh, the entire structure of the play or the the concept of what we're doing. Uh, and we'll continue to do that uh, again this week. <clears throat> so just keep trying to stack some days together and um, see. See where we get as far as we can until we uh, until we break and and then head to training camp. <clears throat> and just a reminder to turn cameras on when you uh, go to ask a question. We'll start with Mike Giardi, followed by Tom Kern. Morning, Bill. You mentioned uh, being happy to see some new faces. Is Stefan Gilmore one of those faces today? Yeah, like I said, we we're kind of scrambling to get things going this morning, so. Uh, uh, I, I didn't really get a chance to, to see everybody myself, so we'll see where we're at. And just in general, you know, obviously we haven't seen him during the voluntary portion of the OTAs. Just how important is he to to your back end and what he brings to the team? Yeah, well, there's a lot of players we haven't seen in OTAs, and um, you know, it's uh, all the players are important, and you know, like to have all of them. Thanks, Bill. Next question, Tom Kern, followed by Mike Reese. Hey, Bill, uh, just following on the question about Steph and, and the attendance, what do you mean there was some weather? Is Did weather prevent people from coming to this? And given that it's mandatory, are these going to be excused by the team? Yeah, well, just the travel arrangements over the weekend. Uh, so not sure exactly, you know, how – how all of it worked out. Uh, we were close on a couple guys this morning, um, but you know, we'll catch up on that after we get done here and see where we're at. All right. I just – so it's not a big deal? I mean, so you you understand how the operation works. We don't see people out there in mandatory minicamp. Are you saying let's not go over the barricades here if there's – it's not that big a deal, in other words? No, I'm saying today's the first day. They just got in here a little while ago. Uh, I'm not sure if everybody is here. Um, we didn't take attendance at the meeting, um, but we'll find out, you know, who's here and who isn't soon enough. All right, thank you. That includes the players that were here last week and the players that weren't here last week and everything else. Next question, Mike Reese, followed by Mark Daniels. So um, in advance of the camp, um, did you have any uh, excused absences that you gave any of the players? Yeah, all, all the communication between me and the players, I'll keep between me and the players, Mike. And um, a different topic, um, you know, you, I mentioned a lot this is a teaching time, not, not an evaluation time. 
Um, and so this question is sort of more on like a general roster composition. I'm curious how you view what you've put together on defense, just relative to maybe just trying to get back to playing, I guess, you'd, if you'd call it like a Patriot brand of defense. Yeah, well, I don't know what that is. We're just trying to teach the players that are here um, what we can, and we're not game planning, and we'll see how it goes. Next question, Mark Daniels, followed by Chris Ryan. Good morning, Bill. Um, with, with Cam Newton, um, how is he progressing after hurting his hand the other week, and do you expect him at practice this week? Yeah, he practiced last week. I'd expect him this year week, too. And uh, on, a, on a different quarterback, Jared Stidham, entering year three, just how has Jared done developmental-wise? Just what have you seen from him, you know, in the early going this offseason? Yeah, I think all the players that have been here have been out on the field and have been in the meetings are progressing as they should. And um, yeah, we'll see what happens when the competition starts. Thank you. All right, next question. Chris Ryan, fall back. <laughs> Morning, Bill. Um, curious as to you know, the value that you see this year in you know, Devin McCourty, Matthew Slater, uh, Andrews, White, the you know, guys who have uh, been here and, and had success with all the new players that are coming in both in terms of free agency and uh, rookie players. Is there more value in those guys this year in terms of messaging and culture? And how do you go about utilizing players to uh, create a environment and, and culture that you um, wish to have? Uh, well, sure. I mean, experience is always helpful, but there's new players every year on every team. That's that's just the way it is in the NFL. So it's nothing different this year. And, you know, the most important thing for all of us, whether we've been here or we haven't been here, is to prepare and to be ready to do our jobs. And that's... Um, that's what we're all trying to do right now. We, players, coaches, head coaches, assistant coaches, position coaches, coordinators, veteran players, rookie players, players that have been signed from other teams. I mean, we're all doing the same thing. We're working on getting back to get, putting our game at the highest level, uh, whatever those responsibilities are. And, um, you know, it'll be that way for a while. That, that's what we need to do for the 2021 season. So. Will you talk to those guys individually as captains, or you just want them to you know, be themselves and to create the, the environment that they normally create, or do you message via them? Uh, yeah, we, we do a number of different things. Um, and it's fluid. It's not the same every year. Next question, Ian Steele, followed by Dan Roach. Morning, Bill. Hey, Ian. Uh, I'm wondering, you kind of mentioned, you know, how the OTAs and to some extent this mini camp is kind of a learning period. Will there be more competitive or evaluation drills and reps in this one, or is it kind of a similar, you know, all teaching, all basic, all baseline stuff this week? Yeah, the practices uh, are basically a continuation of what we've been doing. The rule structure on the mini camps a little bit different. Um, in terms of time and what we can do and so forth. Um, so that, that's, that's the difference. But again, because this is a little bit of a different situation than what it's been, um, you know, with some new players coming in, uh, we have some tryout players here. We have some players that are on our roster that haven't been here. Uh, with the physicals that we've done this morning and trying to get everybody, you know, going here. We have a fixed amount of time that we can work in. Um, there's, there's a little bit of a reorganizational period that uh, today is, uh, especially this, you know, first couple hours here in the morning. Um, but fundamentally, when we get to training camp or to the mini camp practices, um, we're not going to go back over everything that we've covered. Um, the players that have been here are going to continue to move ahead, and the guys that uh, haven't been here will you know, be in a little bit of a catch-up mode. Um, most of them have quite a bit of experience, so you know, I don't think that's um, 
you know, a river that can't be crossed. I think that just will take a little more time and there'll be a level of catching up to do, but that's, you know, that's what it is. So it's, we're not looking for a, a competitive camp. We can't do that. We don't have equipment on and that's not the purpose of the camp and it's not really allowed anyway. So but we've never really tried to do that. Next question, Dan Roach, followed by Mike Reese. Morning, Phil. <coughs> um, just a, a thought kind of following up to what Ian said. When, when they leave here after this mini camp, the, the veterans, what kind of things uh, do you want them to accomplish this week and, and have with them to be ready for training camp and also the rookies as you continue the process? Where does mandatory mini camp fit in the stage of what they've gone through and where they need to be as they get ready for training camp? Yeah, well, I think at the end of the week and for the rookies, um, at the end of the, the rookie development program, which will last a little bit longer, you know, that each of us will leave here with uh, a list of things that we, we need to work on, we need to do, prepare for, for the start of training camp. And then when training camp starts, then uh, hopefully we'll all be ready to do those things and, and to improve them as we go through training camp to, to help the team. So that, that really is the case for all of us. Um, we'll all be at a certain point, and hopefully we can gain some ground between um, this period of time and when we come back again. And that, again, that'll be the case for all of us. Two final questions, Mike Reese and Phil Perry. Phil, so, uh, I'm sure you were pleased to see Dante Hightower back on the field last week. Um, what are your thoughts on him being back, and, and how did he look to you just physically after not playing last year? Yeah, well, it's good to have all the players, um, all the players that we have, and uh, yeah, it's good to see High. You know, High's worked right in very quickly. He's obviously a smart player with a lot of experience, and has a lot of leadership for us on the team. Um, but again, we're not really in an evaluation mode here, so uh, we'll, we'll see how all that goes for everybody when we get to that point. And last question, Phil Perry. Hey, Bill, uh, Mac Jones said something last week about how he's trying to see everything when he's out there, and he acknowledged that you know, it's pretty difficult at times. As a coach, and especially for a player at that position, do you almost want it to be difficult for him? knowing that, you know, maybe the harder it is now, the more prepared he'll be a little bit later. Uh, well, I, I think when you're trying to build a foundation, you want to, you know, build on solid footing. And so there, there are things that are come up that uh, might be pretty advanced or things he might see on the practice field that he won't see during the year. And then there are plenty of things that he will see. And then there are some things that he won't see on the practice field that he definitely will see during the year. Um, and that's true for every player at every position. So, you know, we just do the best we can to try to prepare the players for, you know, what they see. But the main thing is to build a solid foundation of something that comes up for any player, new player, veteran player, anybody is a little bit of an exception or something that's kind of outside the, the norm or outside the, the guidelines that we have on a certain play or a, a certain concept. And, you know, sometimes you kind of have to brush over that knowing that it's probably not going to come up a lot. Um, but that's, you know, that's just part of the process of learning and understanding not only the plays, but the concepts. And, and we try to emphasize that with everybody. That's why we play players in a lot of different positions so they can understand not only what's happening at their primary spot, but what's happening around them and help them have better understanding of, of the overall concept of the, the play and, and where they can, where their, you know, their particular position fits into it. And it could be more than one spot, so. Try not to move too fast and, you know, get too many exceptions and, and move ahead on too many things for anybody or it just becomes confusing. I think the best thing you can do is 
build a solid foundation. Sometimes there's some exceptions that you have to work around. Um, but if the foundation's solid, then, then you can build off it. Uh, if it's not, then you know, then the player doesn't really have a lot to fall back on and, you know, it's nothing to anchor into. So um, we, we try not to do that. But, yeah, there's definitely things that come up on the field that are learning experiences for, you know, Mac and every other player out there. And, um, you know, it's just, just the job of the position coaches and the assistant coaches to try to put it the right, put it the right way, put it in the right category and, help the players understand how how fundamental some things are and how, how much of an exception or one-timer um, another situation might be. Thanks, Bill. Thank you, Coach. Thanks, yep. everyone.